Um, this is our first video presentation from digital-university.org concerning topics in linear algebra and uh, matrix theory. And we thought we would start off um, considering the row echelon form, which is a technique that's used to solve uh, simultaneous linear equations. You may have seen it before, or you may have perhaps be familiar with a variant of the technique. And just to demonstrate its use, let's say that we had these three equations here, three different equations, and we have three different variables, x1, x2, and x3. We want to know, can we solve for values of x1, x2, and x3 that will work in all three equations? Now, if we just had two equations, say we had uh, 8x1 plus 5x2 equals 7, and we had 3x1 plus, say, 7 times x2 equals 23. We wanted to solve these. You could say, well, um, we could multiply this top row here by minus 3 h that when we add, this becomes 3, and we add, we get 0 for x1. And then we only have one of these to work with, then we could walk, work backwards. Um, we could solve for x2, then work backwards to find x1. And if you just have like two equations like this to work with, it's not too inconvenient to use that method. But when you have more than two equations like we have here, we need a bit more of a systematic approach. And that's what the row echelon form is all about. And to set it up, we use what's called the augmented matrix. We take the coefficients of the different columns, the x1, x2, and x3 columns, and make a matrix with them. So we'll have 1, 3, 2. from x1 and 2, negative 1, 3, 1, minus 3, 1 from x3. And we also consider these numbers 2. So we go like this to make the augmented matrix. 3, minus 1, 4. And the first step is we ask ourselves, what number can I, oh, also, when you're setting up for a um, augmented matrix like this, you want the first number and the first column, first column, first row to be 1. So if we had, for example, 4, and this was 4, then we have to divide all the way across by 4 first to make this 1. We don't have to do that because this already is 1. Okay, now what we want to do is eliminate the numbers beneath 1. And notice that here we have a diagonal. These are the diagonal elements. And once we get these numbers to be 0, then we go down the diagonal to this number and make the number beneath that one 0. So here's what we do. Imagine then, to make this 0, you'd have to multiply 1 by negative 3 and add. So imagine that we multiply the first row by minus 3. Now we don't actually change the numbers in the first row. This is still 1, 2, 1. 3, but we do it in our head. We multiply this by minus 3 and then add it to this row. So 1 times negative 3, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, add to that, we have 0. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus negative 1, that becomes negative 7. This would be negative 3 plus negative 3. So that is now negative 6. 
negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus negative 1, this number becomes negative 10. So, okay, we've made the first number beneath 1, 0. Now we also want to make this one zero. So again, we imagine multiplying this first row by negative two and adding. So that's zero. And negative two times two is negative four plus three. That's negative one. And then we have negative two times 1 is negative 2, plus 1, again we have negative 1. And then we have negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 4, this is now negative 2. So now it looks like this. Now what we want to do is move down the diagonal and make the number beneath this diagonal here, make that equal to zero. So it looks like what we'd have to do is multiply this by one seventh. That will give us negative one, no, minus one seventh, that'll give us positive one. When we add it to that, we'll get zero. So let's do this. Let's copy this down. This stays unchanged. This stays unchanged. This, of course, remains zero. Okay, multiply this across by minus one seventh. That becomes plus one. Add it to that. That gives zero, and let's put this in better range. Get this in better viewing range. Okay, multiply this by minus one seventh, that's plus one, add to that, we get zero. This is multiplied by minus one seventh, so that's plus six sevenths, this is minus one, so this becomes minus one seventh. And we multiply this by minus one seventh, that becomes plus ten sevenths, minus two, that would be plus ten sevenths minus fourteen over seven, so this becomes minus four sevenths. Okay, now this matrix that we end up here is what is called row equivalent to what we began with. And what that means is if we can solve this one for x1, x2, and x3, those values that we get for x1, x2, and x3 will also work in this equation. And the way you read it is, whatever coefficient we have here for x1 plus x2 plus whatever the coefficient is for x3 equals that number. And the same thing for this row and the same thing for this row. Well, See, by going through our technique here, we have what's called an upper triangular matrix. Here's the diagonal, and all the numbers beneath the, di the diagonal are zero, so this makes it real easy to solve. Here we just simply have minus one-seventh times x3, equals minus four-sevenths. So obviously, x3 equals 4. Now we proceed to the next row. Here we have minus 7 times x2 and do I have this in range? Okay, minus 7 times x2 minus 6 times x3 that's 4, equals minus 10. So let's see, this is negative 24. Bring that over to this side, that's plus 24. 
So I have minus 7 times x2. Try to keep things in focus. Will equal 24 minus 10 equals 14. It looks like x2 is going to equal negative 2. Okay, now we can go to the first row and we have 1 times x1. So we have, we don't need this anymore. So we have x1 plus 2 times x2. x2 is negative 2. plus x3, that's 4, has to equal 3. So this is minus 4, that's plus 4. These cancel, and we have x1 equals 3, and we've solved the equations. So it's this is probably you've done this in one form or another before. It's just a bit of a more organized approach. Um, and it can obviously get to be tedious if you have a lot of equations to work with. And for example, we had to multiply this row by minus one seventh. So sometimes you get these pesky fractions that you have to deal with along the way. Um, nothing we can do about that. But by using this organized approach, uh, it does make it um, easier to deal with. Now, here, once you went through the row echelon form technique, or the, the, the row echelon technique. See, we ended up with this uh, upper triangular matrix. Here is the Here are the diagonal elements. Everything beneath the diagonal was 0. So that made it real easy to solve the augmented matrix. Uh, obviously, though, every time you have multiple equations that you want to solve simultaneously, you don't always end up with this nice neat form here. And what we're going to do is take a couple of examples from overdetermined systems and see how those work. And then in the next videos after that, we're going to look at other situations when we were applying the row echelon form, it breaks down. But the way the system breaks down tells us something very important about matrices, and that's a lesson that we're going to use over and over again throughout the rest of the videos. So anyway, come back. Join us for the next video. We'll consider a couple more examples of using the row echelon form when the system is overdetermined and what kind of results you can expect um, if you have that kind of situation. So come back, join us for those videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.